Today is Thursday, May 11, 2023. This is video number 3 of my 36-day vacation, so that means I have 33 more coming, and 2 have been uploaded. I am still here in Berlin, but I will be spending half of the day here and the other half in Potsdam. First is the television tower with a perpetually rotating restaurant on the top with a panoramic view of Berlin. Then to the tower where the Nazis used machine guns to shoot down Allied warplanes doing bombing runs against Berlin in World War II. Then to the museum in the Cultural Brewery, which is another museum about much East Germany sucked. Then to the House of the Onesie Conference where the higher-ups of the Nazi hierarchy discussed implementing the murder of Jews across Europe. Then to the Bridge of Spies on the former border of West Germany and East Germany where the CIA and KGB exchanged the captured spies. Then to the Dutch Quarter, an area in Potsdam built in the 1700s designed to look Dutch to attract the notoriously industrious and efficient Dutch workers. Tonight, I will stay at the four-star Hilton Dresden which is in the heart of the city near all the major attractions. Construction of this hotel began when Dresden was in East Germany, and it was to be a hotel catering to Westerners, so the Stasi had all the rooms bugged, but East Germany ceased to exist before its completion, then Hilton bought it. Alexanderplatz it means Alexander Square in English and was a central gathering place in the city for over 700 years and also the site of the biggest protest against the East German regime in 1989. World Time Clock. Built alongside the nearby television tower in time for the 20th anniversary of East Germany in 1969, it shows the time of 148 cities worldwide. Berlin Television Tower. It was constructed in 1969 by East Germany to show the world its technological prowess. It is currently the tallest structure in Germany and there is a perpetually rotating restaurant named Sphere on top with a panoramic view of Berlin. When we visited it for the first time in East Berlin, the restaurant on top used to be called Tele Cafe and we were up there for an hour, then shoot away to make room for the next wave of people coming up, nobody was allowed to stay. Our stay was marred by the suffocating smoke because everybody smoked back then, and the ventilation barely functioned. Smoking is now verboten, thankfully. Checkpoint Charlie. Having been to East Berlin, I can say with certainty this is not the original building, but it may be a replica of the older version that stood in the 1950s. Years ago, we stayed in East Berlin because it was cheaper and I have fond memories of the sumptuous breakfast buffet at Hotel Under Den Linden. Unfortunately, the hotel was demolished at least a decade ago. Black Tower in Humboldt Thane. This was of the three constructed in Berlin by the Nazis during World War II to defend it from the American and British planes performing bombing runs. On the top were massive machine guns capable of firing 8,000 rounds per minute or 133 rounds per second. After the war ended, several towers proved too difficult to dismantle, so they were instead repurposed. One in Hamburg was acquired by a hotel chain and is undergoing renovations to become a luxury hotel with a forest on top. Museum in the Cultural Brewery. Housed in a former East Berlin beer factory is a museum about the history of Germany with a permanent exhibit, Everyday Life in East Germany.
The Trabant was introduced in 1964 as the East German answer to the immensely popular West German Volkswagen Beetle. It was much cheaper but poorly built and the design remained essentially similar from its 1964 introduction to 1990. The smoke belching 25 horsepower motor with a displacement of 0.6 liters needed 27 seconds to propel it to 60 miles an hour. The exterior was made from mostly recycled low-grade Soviet cotton waste. Despite the shortcomings, at least half of the cars in East Germany were Trabants because that was the only option for most of the proles. House of the Onesey Conference. This idyllic lakeside villa harbors a dark history. The higher-ups of the Nazi hierarchy gathered here in 1942 to discuss the Final Solution Initiative, calling for the systematic murder of Jews in Germany and occupied territories. Towards the end of the meeting, cognac was served, and six million people were murdered. No, I did not understand a damn thing. Bridge of Spies. It is the same bridge in the movie, Bridge of Spies, starring Tom Hanks. During the Cold War, it straddled the border between West Germany and East Germany, and a white line in the middle served as the exchange point for the captured spies between the Soviet KGB and the American CIA. The checkpoint that was here had the distinction of being the only one from East Germany to West Berlin manned entirely by Soviet soldiers, not by East German soldiers. Dutch quarter of Potsdam, the area's shortage of skilled workers prompted the king to order the construction of 134 two-story red brick houses completed in 1740. The houses were designed to appear Dutch in a bid to attract the desirable Dutch craftsmen known for being industrious and efficient. Hilton Dresden. In 1987, when Dresden was a part of East Germany, the construction of what was to be the Dresdner Hof Hotel began. The intended clientele were mainly Westerners, so the East German secret police had the rooms bugged, but by the time it was completed, East Germany ceased to exist. Hilton bought the building in 1992 and, I would assume, also removed the bugs. Tomorrow, I will drive to Altenburg to visit a hair salon that opened in 1926 and was closed and locked up in 1966 but was recently rediscovered with everything still intact inside. Then to the museum with the largest rat king in the world on display. Then I will drive to Dresden to visit the former East German police station that also detained political dissidents. Then to the world's most beautiful milk shop, it has been verified by the Guinness Book of World Records. Then to the museum, World of East Germany, which, as the name implies, is about East Germany. Then end the day with the Dresden Transport Museum with cars, buses, trains, and more on display. This video is number 3 of my 36-day vacation, and I will be uploading videos every day, subscribe for daily updates.